do realize Dandelion doesn't have a sister. Sure he does. Saw him himself. Funny, she don't look like him at all. Blonde, for starters. Maybe they're different fathers. Mm-hmm. Different mothers, too. Maybe. And here we are. Thank you for your company. Likewise. See ya. We have been led on a wild goose chase through all of these different women, which Dandelion has had some sort of relationship with. Now we've only got one more that we need to search. And she's in this house. What do you want? I'm the new cook. And them pointy things sticking out behind you, they your cleavers? Away with you, vagrant. A lot of these side missions, well no, this isn't really a side mission, it's a plot critical mission. But it's one of the sort of smaller aspects of it where you gotta go and find these women who might know something about where Dandelion's whereabouts are. But a lot of these smaller missions can get pretty involved, like us having to find a way to sneak into this mansion. Of course, you gotta do that by crawling around the cliffs on the side of Novigrad, and you get a nice view while doing it and all that. And then it goes, and this mission will expand to a, an actual side mission, which I will complete before this episode finishes. But uh, it, it's, this game can feel, even though the map is pretty big, the game can feel kind of small, but everything just like keeps growing out wider and wider. There's a really lot to this game. Interesting. Now, I do like this thing where it's this, this um, guy, Gilbert Blith, he had, I'm going to assume that he died trying to do what Geralt did here, like he slipped off of that rock and then fell and broke his neck or something like that. But he was... <laughs> wrote a love letter to Rosa, and clearly didn't make it there. Now, I didn't know this, I had to look this up. This Gilbert Blith is possibly a reference to an Anne of Green Gables character. Now, I never read any of those books, but I have seen some of the movies and stuff, but I would not have gotten that reference on my own, so I had to look that one up. I'm gonna steal all your shit while I'm back here. What you get for just leaving it outside, you know, in your walled courtyard. <laughs> Who are you? Why are you here? Answer this instant or I'll summon the guards. Ah, uh, sorry to sneak in, miss. I'm Geralt, a friend of the Bard Dandelion. <gasps> Geralt of Rivia? The famed Witcher of the Ballads? What are you doing here, Vagrant? How'd you get in? Well, I, I let no one in the front, my lady. I swear it on the great sun. Not a word. I'll handle this. Hold your tongue, sir. This... This is Frederick Francis de Bergerac, my new swordplay instructor, correct? Show him to the training room. I shall join him shortly. But, miss, he just claimed to be the cook. He's a cheat, he is. <laughs> See, Frederick. Did I not warn you not to jest with the guards? They haven't any sense of humor whatever. Now take Master de Bergerac to the training room, quickly. As you say, miss. I hope you realize what you've got yourself into. Hope so too. Miss Rose has got a downright beastly temper. Shows no mercy once she grips a sword. <laughs> Grab a wooden one. And take hair, care then? not to hurt the little miss. Or you'll follow me. Ah! 
You're my new instructor. Well, well, Papa clearly went out of his way this time. Wood, to start with. I must know your worth. I'm not sure why the game developers thought that they were actually tricking us into thinking these two women were the same person. Clearly an example of identical twins, considering she doesn't remember seeing Geralt a few minutes ago, and she's wearing completely different clothes, and she was in a room she wouldn't have been able to get to. It's kind of obvious. Well fought. You're much better than the last one. I'm not actually your swordplay instructor. Really? Then who are you? And how on earth did you get in? I'm a witcher. I'm looking f A witcher? That's splendid. I always wanted to meet a witcher. This is so exciting. Uh, what's so exciting about it? Living on the edge. Tracking, then facing down beasts. Sleeping under the stars. Oh, it must be wonderful. Hmm. Try fighting a Zoogle while up to your neck in sewage. Nothing quite like it. Not one of the high points, I suppose. Wait, weren't you about to ask me something? Before I ask, gotta admit, you do pretty well with a sword. One pointer. Don't expose your left flank when you dodge. Oh, I know. Terrible habit. Can't seem to get rid of it. I'd hope to find someone in Novigrad who could help me to do so. But... Don't you dare try to dazzle me with advice. Already admitted you're not here to give me lessons. Came to ask about your rhetoric tutor, Dandelion. Rhetoric tutor? Good one. That is why Papa hired him, but not at all what the Bard had in mind. He mostly played his lute and sang for us. I believe he thought he was wooing. Mean he wasn't? But you had some sort of relationship? If you call him chasing after me a relationship. Even so, there was nothing between us. Seems my sisters had a bit of fun at our expense. But enough chatter. Stand and fight. I demand a rematch. These two sisters are the family of a Nilfgaard diplomat. Now, it seems as though there are a lot more... Nilfgaard, uh, Nilfgaard's in this city than you would suspect, considering the rather open hostility there exists between the city and that, uh, that empire there. I wonder how old these two sisters are supposed to be. It can be really hard to tell in video games how old somebody is intended to be by their looks. I would assume that maybe they're somewhere between, like, uh, I don't know, 18 and 20 or so, but, you know, how the hell am I supposed to know? <laughs> it is funny to see somebody else who rejected Dandelion's advances, though. Well, if you're not an instructor, you should certainly be one. Fancy giving me a few private lessons? Can't rightly refuse a request from a lady. What are you two lovebirds whispering about? You asked about my relationship with Dandelion? Well, here's the mix-up's mastermind. Edna Var Atra, the greatest mischief-maker north or south of the Yoruga. Wait a minute. Mean to say Dandelion mixed you two up? On occasion, yes. But then Rosa would quickly set him straight. If you'd shut your catty mouth for a moment, dear little sister, I could explain. Edna sent Dandelion some love letters. She signed my name. Conceited as he is, naturally he fell for it. I was left to repel the aging bard's advances. Rosa, I had the best of intentions, you know that. I felt you needed help taking the first step. You blushed every time he sang a ballad. He'll next sing at your funeral if you don't stop it right now. Calm down, ladies. No poet's worth two sisters nipping at each other's throats. Especially not this one. Listen, I just want to know one thing. 
Either of you seen Dandelion lately? Edna might have. I certainly have not. My dear sister, I would never spend time alone with a man for whom you burn with a secret passion. Burn with passion? For one who incessantly praises another woman's talents? Afraid I've more sense than that. Dandelion act any different lately? Notice anything strange? Strange? Not really. It's no use, Geralt. She's so enamored, she'd hardly notice if he turned into a werewolf. Edna! What? You needn't pretend he followed convention. Remember when he took us to the cemetery? Rhetoric lessons in a cemetery. Unusual even for Dandelion. We set out to visit the graves of celebrated Oxenford professors. He ended up quizzing us about Margrave Henkel. Who? Eccentric old coot. Died recently. He'd apparently been an important and generous patron of the arts as a young man. What are two young Nilfgaardian aristocrats doing in Novigrad? Dying of boredom. Papa's a diplomat. He also has many business dealings in Novigrad. He's a member of the Trade Corporation. Takes us along everywhere he goes, and must then find us new tutors in each spot. And so in Novigrad, the task fell to the poet Dandelion. Rosa's betrothed. Edna! Bet sophisticated young ladies like you know a bunch about politics. We've picked up a few things. What would you like to know? Wonder how the war's going. Any outcome looming? Papa says much depends on Radovid, and on who captures Novigrad first. What's Novigrad got to do with it? Free city. Never taken sides. Always stayed out of conflicts. Oh, even children know Novigrad's home to the world's largest fleet. And they say the city's treasury's bursting with enough to equip two armies. Emperor continuing to push north. Courtiers must be ecstatic. His confidants must be. But Papa says that's not likely to last much longer. Why not? Papa says the war's disrupting trade, and people are tired of financing the Emperor's adventures. Changing subjects. who Dandelion sing about? Know anything about her? I believe she's a poetess, or Trebaritz. Very skilled and exceptionally talented, of course. This woman. Not a local, right? Hmm. I seem to remember him praising her melodious Kaviri accent. Makes sense. He referred to her as Kalonetta a few times. Bizarre names are common in Kavir. Gotta ask Zoltan about this Kalonetta. Been a pleasure, but I've got stuff to take care of. Exceedingly nice to meet you. Please come again. Well, can I expect any more lessons in future? Awfully convincing, miss. Wonder where you learned it. Name the time and place. How's here, tomorrow. Same time as today. See you then. See you, Master Witcher. So we have two daughters of a diplomat and well, they get dragged everywhere their father goes and that's probably not the best thing for their social life. They seem to be bored. Edna here plays tricks on Rosa, Rosa doesn't like that and she spends all of her time practicing swordplay and it seems like it would kinda suck. They did give us some information about what's going on in the society, the Nilfgaard society. And they gave us a little bit of information about potentially what Dandelion was up to. We do know that he's a bit of a ladies' man. He jumps from woman to woman. and But each, uh, most of the, most of them, or yes, half of them at least by this point, seems as though he was preoccupied with a different woman. And the other ones seem to have been more about him being preoccupied with doing something else entirely. Now, we did know something about Dandelion 
was involved in some kind of a heist. Greetings! You here for a specific reason? Got a meeting with Rosa. A fencing lesson. Geralt of Rivia, yes? Miss Rosa stepped out for a walk. Near Temple Bridge, she said. She asked that you join her. Guess it's gonna be an interesting lesson. Thanks. And it's easy to assume that a lot of the information that he was asking about, like from these two, or, or going and visiting certain graves of people that had died recently that were connected in the city and all that kind of stuff, is probably connected to that. So, clearly Dandelion wasn't really up to much good. Alright, so, we have another training session with Rosa now. That previous cutscene in the basement was the last of the main mission, the Broken Flowers mission, that I'm going to complete for this episode. I'm going to go and do fencing lessons, another side mission, but I gotta go meet Rosa outside of the city. Elf Guardian Regiment always accompany you on your walks? Always. Papa's orders. It's for your protection, Rosa dear. People here hate us. Why? What have I done to them? But enough about that. Soldier, you may leave. But His Excellency Ambassador Baratra said that... And this Excellency is telling you otherwise. Do you not recognize him? This is Geralt of Rivia. The best swordsman the North has ever seen. I'm safe with him. Now march off, quickly. Left, right, left, right. Finally. Let's go, Geralt. I've something I wish to show you. We were supposed to train, not go for a walk. I know, Geralt. Now stop harping on about it and let's go. The fact that Edna and Rosa grew up with a very sheltered lives, hidden away from the world, hopping from city to city, only really interacting with the guards and tutors and stuff, seem to have had a rather negative impact on their sort of social IQ. Here. You see, I thought that instead of training in a dank gold cellar, we'd move around in the open air. A duel on a bridge, like in the novels. Now draw your sword. Only got my steel and silver swords. We should be fighting with practice weapons. We should. But you of all people ought to know, there's much more fun in doing things you shouldn't. If that's what the lady wishes, just don't want to see anyone crying later. I've a hanky for you, just in case. On guard! I wonder what would have happened if I'd refused. She is only level 10, so she will go down amazingly easy, but this seems crazy dangerous for her. You all right? Yes. The only thing you've really hurt is my pride. By the way, how do you get interested in fencing? I was bored. I've no friends here. Papa keeps me on a short lead. It's banquet after banquet after banquet. I detest banquets. <laughs> Boring conversations, terrible food, and weak booze. Exactly. At least with a sword in hand, I can have some fun. You know, blow off steam. All right, what's next? We should return. Just forgive me, Geralt. I know this might sound awkward, but would you mind turning around for a moment? My corset's shifted. It's pinching me terribly. I can understand a woman wanting to look pretty, but fighting in a corset? It slows you. Rosa? Shit, she ran off. Anything happens to her, Varatra will kill me. Need to find her. Of course, that ultra-sheltered lifestyle is far. coming back to haunt us again. Seven she spends all way. of her time surrounded by Great. tutors and surrounded by guards and family and all that stuff. She has this one Here chance to... <laughs> she uses the opportunity of Geralt being here and the guards being away to slip away. Now, I don't know what the hell she's planning on doing, 
I don't know if she has any plan on what she's doing. She's just trying to get away for a few minutes. Far from home, aren't you, sweetie? And there's no telling if you'll ever get back. She's Ambassador Varatra's daughter. She's got diplomatic immunity. I don't really understand the shot you're saying. Now it's clear you love your black ones. It's no surprise, Lucas. Witches are drawn to monsters just the way things are. But this beastie... Oh, we'll tempt the world ourselves. Let me rephrase. Put it in words you'll understand. Piss. Off. Well, well. It's not just black ones who tell us what to do. It's witches as well. Too bad I listen to neither. Game, Lucas! Oh, she's gotten into some kind of trouble here. Now, I could have talked her way out of this, bribed them to leave or something like that. But, well, things went the wrong way and now I gotta make them dead. So... That's how it goes. Understand now why your father insists soldiers follow you around? So they can save me, as you did. No, so you won't need saving to begin with. Rosa, those humans died because of you. What of it? Do you expect me to shed a tear? Observe a minute of silence? They were dregs, they got what they deserved. you wonder why the locals hate Nilfgaard? I thought you were different from other Nordlings. That you understand us, our sense of justice. I see I was wrong. You should go home now. And take the shortest, not the scenic route. I understand. Farewell, Geralt. And good luck on the path. That shows us a lot right there about how the locals would react so negatively to the sort of upper-class nobility of a potentially invading army just stumbling about in their lands and all that kind of stuff. As well as the opinion that that nobility would have on the locals of the people that they clearly think are lesser than them. Not only are they of a lower class of people, they are also of a country or a city or whatever you want to call this that they clearly feel superior to and the fact that they feel like they can go in here and invade. Rosa seems to not understand or not understand or not even care about what these people think of her. She thinks she's better than them. She has a certain sort of cultural understanding of her being superior to them and they should just sort of bow down to her or submit to her or something like that. And had I not killed them, she would have like mentally taken a note of who they were so that when Nilfgaard eventually invades and takes over the place, she could have justice dealt to them. Whatever justice might end up being, I assume that means she would have them killed. Also, another thing that I want to point out is that when we came across Rosa facing those two men, her personality seems to have been different. She was always rather outgoing. She was always quick to put a word in. She was aggressive and all that kind of stuff in every other scene that we've seen her in. But when facing those two thugs, she just sort of got quiet and she waited there. Sort of, I don't know, her head was facing down a little bit and she was kind of trying to avoid confrontation in a certain way. Waiting for Geralt to show up and sort of get her out of that situation and then once they were dead she reverted back to her more aggressive personality. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the first time that she had ever encountered a situation like that and all of her training and all of her arrogance and all that kind of stuff didn't really prepare her for the reality of the situation that she was facing. Now of course she didn't have to face the consequences of the situation she had placed herself in by running away so as soon as the situation was over, she didn't learn anything from it. She didn't grow as a person or anything like that. She is the same person that she was when we first met her. There is no character arc here. There's a strong bias against the idea of having static characters exist in a work of fiction. 
some people think that every character needs to be rather dynamic, meaning the character has some sort of a character arc. They change as a person in some way throughout their character's story time. Uh, that's not really the case. In fact, minor characters such as Rosa or Edna are not really supposed to be particularly important. They don't really need a character arc, and in some ways, them having a character arc would probably be distracting. So the fact that she ends her portion of this story the same person that she was when she started isn't really a weakness of the plot, just a sort of necessity of storytelling. Thank you.